It's a prize like this one ought to remember what is the tip of an iceberg, and the prize is in many ways also acknowledging the whole community that uh, without which no individual work would make sense. I would like to uh, take the opportunity to especially thank some of my mentors in physics, like my PhD advisor, Ted Jacobson, and also Don Meroff and Raphael Busso. And uh, without further ado, I also am going to talk about something post when I got the prize, something a little more wild, and hopefully uh, it's not so wild that it's uh, made them regret getting me the prize. So, the, I'm going to talk about traversal uh, wormholes and their relationship to quantum teleportation. So here's a wormhole. And if you could send a causal curve, like a light ray, through this wormhole in such a way that it gets through out the other end, then we call the traversable wormhole. Now there's a general relativity theorem that sometimes called topological censorship that forbids traversable wormholes if the stress sensor obeys something called the null energy condition, which says that the null component of the stress sensor for any particular null direction is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Roughly speaking, at a very broad level of generality, this theorem is due to the fact that if, there were, if the wormhole were traversable, for reductio, then there would have to be some light ray that gets through the fastest. And if you look at that light ray, nearby light rays would have to converge as they enter the wormhole and diverge as they leave, just because of the nature of the geometry. But that means that gravity has to be repulsive, acting on the light rays somewhere in the middle, and that requires a flux of negative energy, at least assuming the standard Einstein equation. So in the past, it has appeared that traversability would require one of two things, either exotic matter with a strange stress tensor or an exotic gravity theory that goes beyond Einstein. Now, quantum fields are an interesting way to try to evade the null energy condition, because in general they don't obey the null energy condition, but actually the theorem that uh, rules out traversal wormholes only requires a weaker statement that's the average null energy condition. And this is the statement that you have a complete null geodesic, so it extends infinitely in both directions. You could label it by an affine parameter v, and now, if we take the integral of TVV along V, we demand that the entire integral be positive, although not necessarily the integral. Uh, this has been known to hold for flat space three fields for a long time, but I do want to highlight it was actually only recently, in 2016, that we got some general proofs that this holds for general interacting quantum field theories. Uh, these proofs were done in the Minkowski space. I'm pretty sure they would also apply along Kelly horizons, but that was not claimed explicitly in these papers. But it turns out that for quantum field theory in current space time, there are exceptions to the average null energy condition as well. And the general rule. Uh, is that the average null energy condition actually only is required along complete null geodesics that satisfy an additional condition that is called atronal, meaning not chronal, which means that no two of the points of the light ray are separated by time-like curves. Now you might think, well, of course they're lifelike separated, but in the gravitational field, generically, Light rays can be slowed down by passing through gravitational potentials, and it's actually possible to catch up with them. So, for example, if this is the sun, and you have a light ray that's bending as it goes by the sun, then if I start far enough away to the left, 
and that I'm going to end up far enough to the future, I can take a little detour and not go as close to the sun. By the Pythagorean theorem, I actually lose very little by going farther away from the sun than this light ray. I lose very little time, and but I have less of a time delay from coming close to the sun. So as a time-like uh, person, I could actually go faster than this light ray. So actually, the generic thing in a gravitational theory is that there aren't a formal uh, complete null geodesics. And this was uh, discussed in a very nice paper by Graham and Olam, where they pointed out that if you just impose the a formal in it, you actually get almost all of the consequences you wanted from the average null energy condition in the first place. Generically, the assumption of the a chronal anna can actually be used to prove that no a chronal complete null geodesics exist. But somewhat ironically, the mere fact that there are no a chronal null geodesics is enough to rule out things like traversable wormholes and all of these other things that people were trying to rule out. But this suggests a possible loophole. And the loophole is if we can make it so that the geodesic going through the wormhole is chronal instead of a chronal. And that could be the case if the two wormhole ends were, in the set, were connected somehow, and it was actually not a wormhole that's useful for faster than light travel because there is a faster way through that doesn't go through the wormhole that just goes around it. This exception or loophole actually is not very useful in the classical theory because in the classical theory, if we have a traversable wormhole with non-trivial topology, we can always pass to the universal covering space, which is simply connected, where we unfold this so it looks like the wormhole is connecting different regions. And in the universal covering space, the light ray that goes through this wormhole will become a chronal and the original, the a chronal and the position to rule it out. But quantum field theory actually cares about topology. For example, if I take the Minkowski space and I compactify one of the spatial dimensions to be on S1 on a circle, I will actually get a Casimir energy that can be negative, which is different from the energy density of the Minkowski space. So in general, it's not allowed to take universal covers in quantum field theory in curved space time. And recently, which I define in the sense of more recently than GR21, it was shown that quantum field theory actually does allow traversable wormholes if you couple the two ends of the wormhole. Uh, externally. But by the very nature of this loophole, such wormholes could not be used to travel faster than light because you actually get a slowdown relative to going around the long way. So we originally implemented this in, uh, this was with my collaborators, Dan Jaffers and the student Ping Gao. We originally implemented this in the context of ADS-CFT, although uh, where um, you have an analog of the Einstein-Rosen bridge that's supposed to be holographically dual to a special entangled state of two CFTs that represent asymptotically anti-disciplinary boundaries that are time-like. But if you like, you can actually think of this effect as the, uh, purely on the, quote, bulk side of the duality, and just think of it as something that happens for quantum field semi-classical gravity in, with asymptotically ADS boundary conditions, if you don't want to think about the CFTs. So in this context, this is the Penrose diagram. The standard Harvard-Hawking state is actually marginally not traversable, and you can use a proof like the one I talked about, 
using the average no energy condition along the light ray going along with the light ray that's going along the future horizon to show that it would not be possible to make this into a traversable wormhole. Which also makes sense given the holographic duel because that would couple two theories, two CFTs that are not interacting. Well, we uh, decided to take advantage of a loophole in a way that was a little bit of a cheap trick. We just decided to couple the CFTs directly to each other using a time-dependent interaction term with some of the fields in the CFT. From the gravity perspective, this is just a coupling of, say, some scalar field boundary condition here. We're coupling the scalar field boundary condition here with the scalar field boundary condition here. So a particle that hits this left boundary could actually instantly teleport to the other side just because that's an explicit coupling. Now, now that's not what we mean by a traversal wormhole, that particles can teleport from here to there. That would be uh, a silly definition of a traversal wormhole. But the point is that when you turn on this coupling, it actually makes negative energy fluxes that go into the space-time. And these negative energy fluxes violate the average null energy condition, but that is allowed because now there's an interaction between the fields here and the interact with the fields here. So from a moral perspective, these are, this is actually now a chromal light ray. It will actually change the commutation relations of the fields here with the fields here, making it so that the lowest energy ground state is different. Once you take into account the gravitational back reaction, this has the effect of making the Penrose diagram taller, which means that if you start sufficiently early on the left-hand side, you can actually make it through the wormhole and end up on the other side. And even though from the perspective of somebody in the frame of reference going here, this is a very small effect, because it's the, the opening uh, here is proportional to GH bar, so it's Planckian. Actually, from the perspective of some, because of the redshift factor at the horizon, from the perspective of somebody who starts off early enough, they have a large Lorentz boost at the horizon relative to a, a sort of central observer of this diagram. And from their perspective, the wormhole is actually wide open. And it's even an effect that's in the iconal regime, which means that the semi-classical approximation we're using actually seems to be under good control. And this is not one of those situations where you would expect that uncontrolled blocking effects would spoil this reversibility. So the, we speculated in our paper that this could be related to quantum teleportation, although the analogy in our paper was a little weak because the interaction term we turned on between the left and the right was a quantum interaction. But in a very nice paper by Nalasena, Sanford, and Yang, they modified our protocol slightly in a way that actually showed that it's sufficient if the two systems are uh, coupled by a classical communication channel. So from this perspective, from the holographic perspective, we think of this as two systems that are dual to single-sided black holes, but they're quantum entangled with each other. And the quantum entanglement is equivalent to the einstein rosen wormhole between them. Then the traversability from this perspective comes, this is if you think of the black hole as a sort of ordinary <coughs> quantum systems. If I drop a qubit in here, and then in their protocol, you can actually send classical communication to this other uh, black hole system, the same qubit comes out. From the perspective of quantum teleportation, this is just a reconstruction of the qubit, but from the perspective of the bulk dual, it actually gets through. The essential reason why they were able to do this is that they showed that this quantum coupling between the two sides, if I quantum couple the two sides, send my object through, 
And then after the object gets through, I actually just trace out this quantum system and forget about it. Then they show that this interaction can actually be replicated by this purely classical communication. Because once the object comes through, I no longer care about the state of this black hole. So we're last slide. Um, I want to mention that there's been a lot of further extensions since then. There have been some people who have extended this to make protocols that allow for internally traversable wormholes. There are versions where you can embed both ends into a single asymptotically flat region. There's a nice paper that shows that you can make them traversable with standard model fields. And there is even a recent paper that made some non-determinative quantum instantons that seem to make it possible to characterize the two ends of this wormhole. So maybe this is something that would actually be possible to make as a sort of party trick if we had a sufficiently advanced futuristic technology, even if we couldn't use it to actually uh, get anywhere faster than we could in your spaceship. All right, thank you. Censorship. One of the ideas is that somehow that um, you know trap surfaces would form and so on. So in your models, do you allow for you know trap surfaces to be formed and actually screen um, you know screen these observers from going through? Because that's one of the heuristic sort of arguments when logical censorship. Right. So. The, the trap surfaces arguments, which are ultimately based on proofs related to Penrose and singularity theorem, uh, say that you, you end up having the light rays converge to a singularity if you have a trap surface defined as the area is decreasing everywhere uh, if you shoot out light rays and you satisfy the null energy condition. So the exception here is that the quantum fields do not satisfy the null energy condition, and therefore a trap surface doesn't necessarily lead to a singularity. There is, however, a generalization of trap surfaces that I define called quantum trap surfaces, where you correct the area uh, derivative of the uh, trap surface definition with another term involving the derivative of the entanglement of the quantum fields. This is inspired by black hole thermodynamics, where you have an area of a black hole of entropy, you add the entropy of any matter outside of it. So you can extend some of these ideas if you say there's a quantum trap surface, then you have issues. But in these sorts of situations where the wormhole is connected around the back, you can't consistently do that either to rule this out because there's, in order to find the entropy of quantum fields, you need a clean separation between an inside and an outside. And that doesn't work if you have this non trivial topology. I like the idea of a party trick. We expect you to do this at the opening reception of the 120 seconds. GR conference. Uh, that might be one of my descendants doing it, but fair enough. <laughs> 